I'd like to ask you real quick, sir, where, where do you stand? You said last week uh, that this report about uh, migrant families at the border getting payments uh, was garbage. No, I didn't uh, say that. Let's get it straight. You said everybody coming across the border gets five hundred, four hundred fifty thousand dollars. So the number was what you had a problem. The number with. I was referring to. Okay. Now here's the thing. Sure. If in fact, because of the the outrageous behavior of the last administration, you coming across the border, whether it was legal or illegal, and you lost your child, you lost your child. It's gone. You deserve some kind of compensation, no matter what the circumstance. What that will be, I have no idea. I have no idea. Mr. President, Mr. President, can I follow up on paid leave, Mr. President? <laughs> Sir, Mr. May President. I follow up on paid leave? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. President, Democratic Congresswoman Abigail Spamberger said of your presidency this week, nobody elected him to the FDR, they elected him to be normal and stop the chaos. How do you view your mandate after Tuesday's election losses for Democrats, and is she wrong? Abigail's a friend. We had a long talk. She joked and said, and I have a picture, she said, I have a picture of Roosevelt hanging in my office, her office, okay? I don't intend to be anybody but Joe Biden. That's who I am. And what I'm trying to do is do the things that I ran on to do. And look, people out there are ordinary, hardworking Americans, are really, really been put through the ringer the last couple years, starting with COVID. COVID has disrupted almost every family one way or another, whether it's wearing a mask or losing a family member. You know, 750,000 plus Americans dead? 750,000. And so people are worried. People are also worried about, you know, coming up, they, they don't, understandably. Why is the price of, of, of agricultural products, when I go to the store, why is it higher? What, like, for example, <clears throat> if I had, if we were all, going out and having lunch together, and I said, let's ask whoever the, whoever's in the next table, no matter how, wh what restaurant we're in, have, have them explain the supply chain to us. Think they'd understand what's, what we're talking about? They're smart people, but supply chain. Well, why is everything backed up? Well, it's backed up because the people who supply the materials that end up being on our kitchen table or in our, in, in, our, our, fam our, our, our life, guess what? They're closed those plants because they have COVID. They're not, and so it's a complicated world that people are facing. We've never faced anything like this before. I mean, I'm not saying it's the worst of every time in American history, but we never faced anything this, this sort of defiant of understanding of what's going on. And you can understand why people are upset. And I, I, whether you have a PhD or you're, or, or you're working, you know, in a restaurant, it's confusing. And so people are understandably worried. They're worried. And so all I can say is what I'm going to try to do is explain to the American people as best I can. And by the way, you all write for a living. I haven't seen any one of you explain supply chain very well. No, no, I'm not being critical. I'm being deadly earnest. When your editor says, explain the supply chain. Okay? Lots of luck in your senior years, my coach used to say. <laughs> but but, but, but I, I sincerely mean it. This is a confusing time. Confusing time. Think of all those children, all those children who may have lost more than a year of education by only being out one semester. Think of all that's going on in terms of access to everything from when you go back to college, if you're in college, you go back to college, where, are, 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 do you have to wear your mask or who's your roommate? What, I mean, this is a confusing moment. And it seems to me that my job as the President of the United States is to try to figure out, myself as well, what is most needed to put people at ease and let them know there's a way through this. There's a way through this. The world has never been here before. That sounds like hyperbole, but think about it. Think about it. This truly is one of those inflection points in history. All the pieces on the board are moving, both in terms of the, the, the relationships among and between nations, as well as the pieces of what employment future we, people have. How do we do this? And so this is a confusing time, but I promise 
I promise the American people, I have one focus. How do we give you some breathing room? How do we get you to the point where we take pressure off you so you can begin to get back to a degree of normality and we move to a different place? And this time when we move, and by the way, everybody internationally uses Build Back Better now. When I use the phrase initially, people looked at me like, Build Back Better. Well, what it means, we're the only country in the world gone through a crisis, that goes through a crisis and come out better than we were before the crisis occurred. That's building back better than it was before. And so this is a process. And uh, I, I just, you know, we're going to see. Take it every day, every moment, at, you know, one moment at a time.